Hello from Macedon Public Library. The craft that I have today is called spool knitting, also called French knitting. So if you're looking on YouTube, you could look it up either way. There's different ways to do it. The old, old-fashioned way is literally with a wooden spool and some nails in it. Then there are um, make your own where you can do it with a um, toilet paper tube and some craft sticks and some duct tape. And then there's also this kind that you can get at some of the craft stores. And what it does is it automatically rotates and does the work for you. And I've used this a lot on using wire um, and beads to make jewelry, lots of different things. So let me show you about making this bracelet. Now this one has beads and it has a multicolored yarn, which you can do plain colored yarn, you can do it without beads. So let me tip this down a little bit so that you can see the workspace here. Okay, so basically there's a couple different ways to do this. This one is a length about, I think it was about 24 inches, and then I folded it so in thirds, and then I braided it. This one here, this one what I did was a lot longer, but this one is more of like a crocheted loop. So I can undo this and we can do it back up to make a crocheted loop and it looks braided, but you can do it tight, you can do it loose, and then you can join your bracelet together. So it's just about making loops and pulling them through and then it starts to look a little bit like a braid. So let's get started. So I have here one of the toilet paper rolls and I also marked um, each roll with a colored one. So that way you know where you started, okay? So the first thing to do is take your yarn, leave a good long tail, and do a slip knot. So I wrapped it around my finger and then I kind of poke it through, kind of like if you're tying a balloon and you have to tie the knot in the balloon. So there we go. So I'm going to put that on my red one because that's my starting one. And I'm going to take that tail and try to get that down the tube because we're going to need to pull that down as we go. And if you've done any knitting loom, this is the same exact thing. Um, it, or finger knitting as well. Oh, and let me show you. Um, I don't have my other examples with me, but one of the ones that I do have is this mushroom one. And there's ones that look like this body. And then there's funky looking ones like this one. And then here's a picture of just the old fashioned wooden spool with the nails. Okay. So I put that on. I've got my slip knot there. Now you can work either way. You can go clockwise or counterclockwise, whatever works for you. But what you need to do is wrap from the inside go around the outside. Okay. Wrap from the inside. Go around the outside, inside, around the outside, okay? So we've gone around each one, and you can see it kind of looks funny from the inside because they crisscross. Then the next thing you're going to do is go around one time, okay, back to your beginning. And I like to hold it with a little tension here on my finger. And now you can choose to use your fingers, or you can use like a toothpick. So what you want to do is pick up that bottom one and bring it over the top of the new one you just did without it slipping off. Now that can be hard sometimes. Sometimes it wants to slip off. Okay. And sometimes that's why just using your finger sometimes works out better than using like a toothpick. Okay. So I'm going to go around once like that. And you can see here. You can pick it up from inside and go over the top and maybe use your finger to keep it from slipping off there. Or you can pick it up from the bottom. And we're going to go over the top of the other one. And, and I'm just using my finger to hang on to that one so it doesn't slip off. Okay? So we've gone around once. Now sometimes these craft sticks have a little bit of slivers on them and it catches your yarn. And that's the one thing you could do is sand them a little bit. Now. Again, we're going to go around again. Let me do it with just my fingers this time. So I'm going to go here, and I'm holding, I'm holding a little tension here with my finger so it doesn't get loose. The other thing you can do is go backwards for the first couple. 
That way it keeps the tension on those first ones there. And again, sometimes it's hard. You have to hang on to the one underneath to keep it from slipping off. Okay, so I'm going around backwards here, but it doesn't really matter as long as you know where you started. And that's why we have the colored one, so we know where we started, okay? All right, now, if you know anything about knitting or are used to holding the tension in your hand, um, you can, kind of like you were going to knit, do a tension on your fingers. And then you don't even have to go around one time. You just kind of keep going. Do one. Do another and you just keep turning and going okay now if you want to throw beads in okay um, what you need to do is string the beads on first which I didn't tell you first but that's what we need to do so say I want to put this first bead in I'm just going to slide it down I'm just going to let it sit there okay I'm going to let it sit there and I'm going to do the next stitch and I'm just going to keep going around and you can throw as many beads in as you want, or you don't have to have any beads. Okay, so I'm going to go around again. I'm going to go around again, okay? All right, so you get the idea. Now what we need to do is pull on that thread that's down there. And so I can show you using this one, which it got a little squished, but hey, that's okay. All right, so I had a stopping point where I measured how many yards. I think this one so far has like over 20 yards in it so with this one I'm gonna I did the tension thing where I just do one at a time but again you can go around do it around once go back to your starting colored popsicle stick and then pull them over like I said sometimes it was easier to do it with my fingers than it was to do it with the um, toothpick but whatever works for you Crochet hooks are kind of weird because they kind of get caught on the yarn. Okay, so after you go around a few times, that's when you want to make sure this is all squished down there and pull, okay? And that's what creates your tube, all right? Now, like I said, the one thing that you can do with this first one is I divided it into like three sections, kind of like this. And then I just started braiding. So what I did was I used like a clip to hold these together. And I just started doing a braid. And I went through and did a braid. And the other end seemed like it was going to be tangled, but it untangled because it was loose. So I was able to untangle it. And then after you've done your braid, and it's check it to see if it's the right size for your hand, okay? Then you can just kind of sew this, the end of the yarn that you had there, sew it together so that it stays together, okay? You could even, if you're creative, put a button in. All right, now for the other version, the crocheted version, so take a loop, start a loop like a crocheted loop. If you've ever done any kind of crochet, all it is is a loop, okay? And then I'm going to kind of pull through this, the long part, pull it through, keep it tight if you can, kind of keep, keep it tight. I like the tight braid, but maybe you like it looser. We're going to pull it through, starting to look like a braid. Pull it through and kind of tighten as you go. Okay, starting to look like a braid. I'll show it from this side. Pull it through, push it through, whatever works. Okay, try not to twist it because then your braid will look twisted. Okay, like already it kind of looks a little funny, but you can reshape it a little bit and it starts to look like a braid. Okay, and go as long as you need to to make your bracelet, or you can make something longer if you want to keep going. All right, now um, I think I'll make some kits up. So we'll have one of these with probably, I'm guessing, about 20 yards of yarn. I can put some beads in with it in case you're interested in that. Okay, but this is all up to you to create whatever you want to create. And then if you come across um, something simple like one of these, sometimes you can find these at old yard sales and things, then go for it and have a good time.